Hello everyone. Today we're going to deploy Kubeflow very easily with the help of microcades. You can do this on your laptop or workstation as long as you have 16 gigabyte of RAM and 50 gigabyte of storage available. For ease of uh, demonstration today, we're going to use an AWS instance and I'm going to set it up for you uh, from the beginning. So the first step is choosing an Amazon machine image. To use microcades, we're gonna choose Ubuntu server 18.04. And now we need to choose which type of image. To use Kubeflow, 16 gigabyte of RAM are recommended. So let's go and choose that. And then we need to edit the storage because typically we'll be given small amount of storage, in this case, eight gigabytes. So let's edit that and edit it for 60 gigabyte. Review and launch. We can review that we have the necessary memory, the necessary storage and launch. I already have a key pair that I have saved on this laptop. If you don't have another AWS image, you should create a new key pair, uh, give it a name and download it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's good documentation on how to do this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the key pair that I typically use and acknowledge that I already have access to this .pem file. Now the instance has been launched and I can view my instances. I already had an instance running, so I will await the one that is pending. It seems that our instance is ready for Kubeflow. So all we have to do is connect to it via SSH and we'll use a standalone SSH client. And for that, we have to just copy the SSH command into a terminal. And say, yes here. And now we are connected via SSH to our new instance. Now the first thing to do is install microcades. And microcades is a snap, so the way we do this is we type sudo snap install microcades and we'll choose the classic version. Seems that it's taking a bit more time than it should. All right, perfect. So we have microcades now installed. And to verify the installation, we can do microcades status. Now, this is not going to work because I don't have sufficient permiss permissions to access microcades. And it actually tells me to run these commands to update the user group and the owner for microcades. Let's go and run that. And now for the user uh, group to be available, uh, I need to actually exit and log in again. So I just exit and I type the exact same command as previously. And if I do microcades status, 
I have already the services that are running. So it, sa it says that MicroKit is running, but all the services are disabled. So let's go and fix that by typing microkits.enable and a couple of services. A few common services are uh, DNS, storage, and the Kubernetes dashboard, for instance. Okay, so now if you go and run again, microkit status, we can see that these services have been enabled. And we can use this uh, microkits as a normal Kubernetes. So using the kubectl, we can do get all dash dash all namespaces. And we get a list of all the running pods um, and deployments and all the, the services that are running on microkates. Now, finally, the next step is to deploy Kubeflow. And to that, we do it exactly as we do with the other services. So we just, just do microkates.enable Kubeflow. And now we'll have to wait for a few minutes as Kubeflow is quite heavy. So after a few minutes, what we'll see is that actually more than 30 pods uh, were deployed and we see this type of message. So as pods get deployed, will be prompted by uh, a message saying how many pods are remaining for the deployment to be concluded. This takes a few minutes um, because we are deploying 30 plus services on top of uh, microcades. And then in the end, you will get this message. So you get a message saying that Kubeflow is now available with a username and password so you can access the dashboard. And if you end up forgetting this password, you can always just um, type this, com this command and get the password again. So now the next step is actually accessing the dashboard. Because we are on a public cloud VM and we want to access the dashboard on our local machine, we need to actually set up a SOX proxy. How do we do that? So we'll exit the current SSH that we have and we'll SSH again to the machine on AWS, but now using dash D and the port number, for instance, 9999, and then access the VM again. And now what we have to do is on our local uh, network settings, we have to go to proxies, enable a SOX proxy, and um, point it to local host and the port number that we defined before. So let's go and do that, apply. And now we can access the dashboard by going to the link that we were given here. And there you go. So now we are asked for uh, email dashboard, uh, email address and, and password. Here are the credentials that we were given in the terminal. So let's go and copy that. The username is admin, in fact. And we'll paste, paste this. And log in. And there you go. So now we are on the Kubeflow dashboard and we can explore further. Uh, we'll have the notebook servers, the, the home, the pipelines. So all that is typical from a Kubeflow dashboard that is on your VM on AWS in this case, and you can access locally by doing this uh, SOX proxy. 
One command that you may find useful is microcates.juju status that will give us all the services that are running. We can see here ArgUI, the Jupyter controller, uh, Katib, and how the workload, um, what's the status of the workload, and also um, what's the CNI, the internal IP address um, in the Kubernetes cluster, and the ports as well. We can also see uh, a similar thing using the typical kubectl get all dash dash all namespaces. And the difference is in this case we see we see the, the services, the replica sets, deployments uh, separate and with different information on those. So you may want to use both to kind of get a feel for how your cluster is behaving, how the services, um, whether they're running, whether they have restarted, uh, what's their age, and so on. To learn more, visit the links in the description below.